Dun, dun, dun. All right, so now we are officially live streaming here uh, at The Word is Right. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I'm so excited uh, for tonight's show. Uh, Mark States has been all summer, like it's the thing that makes you want summer to be over because you know his feature is going to be in September, at least for me. I was like, itching. I'm like, summer, summer, get the hell out of here already. Uh, but then I'm like, pumpkin spice, no. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a bittersweet that uh, that we had to wait so long, but I'm really glad September's here and he is um, going to be our feature tonight. Uh, and he is a standalone feature. He doesn't even need anyone else to feature with him. He's awesome and incredible. So thank you all so very much for being here to support him. All right, a couple quick announcements. Um, huge shout out to everyone who came to New Mexico for the New Mexico Poetry Summit. That was an incredible event. Um, we had over 100 people rocking through the three-day show. Uh, it was just phenomenal. Uh, so next year, we're going to make it even bigger. It'll be the second weekend of September. If you want to just block your calendar now and put it down, get your get your butts to New Mexico. Yes, we're part of the country. No, you don't need a passport. Uh, I do feel the need to still say this to people. Uh, especially when I'm on the East Coast, uh, that is the the two questions I get asked the most. All right, um, uh, one of our, our dear friends, AJ Houston, uh, who was here at the Poetry Summit. He, he's a, a wonderful poet from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, his mother passed away yesterday. And for those who don't know, Bertie was 90, 91 years old. She was an incredible light in our poetry community. And uh, she poured a great deal into AJ and also poured a great deal into those of us in uh, that poetry circle. And so AJ uh, and the whole Houston family, our deepest condolences to you all. Uh, for for your incredible loss. Uh, the world uh, has lost an angel, but heaven has gained one. So, um, you know, thank you so much for everything you do, AJ. And thank you, Bertie, for all of your contributions to the poetry community. Tomorrow, book club, Red or Green Books has our book club. We're featuring Terry Rose Jertson's book, Chameleon Chronicles, uh, Words Never Spoken. So if you do not know who Terry Rose Jertson is or haven't read her book, uh, she is also a host here at the at the Word is Right. She hosts karaoke night the last Saturday of the month. And her book is phenomenal. It's snarky and funny and witty and real. And it has beautiful artwork and found poems in it that she has, um, she has made. So uh, if you want, uh, it'll be a 1 p.m. live stream on the Red or Green Books Facebook page. Find us on social media, right? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. If you go to Word is Right's YouTube page, we have hundreds of videos up there. Like straight up, we got so much content up there from people all over the world. Also, Red or Green Books has all of the book launches on there. You can go back and, and look at the incredible poets who we are launching. All right, some quick housekeeping uh, housekeeping items for today. The way the flow of this show usually goes, especially because we only have one feature, is we're going to go about 20 minutes into the open mic, maybe 25 minutes into the open mic, and then we're going to bring up our feature Mark States. And Mark's going to have uh, between 20 and 30 minutes. Uh, since he's the only feature today, he could take a little bit longer. It's a it's a very casual show. We flex uh, a lot of things. So if Mark wants to take the full time, he may. If he does not, he, he doesn't have to. He can check in with me and ask how much time do I have left and I will let him know. Uh, but that definitely will give you enough uh, immersion, consistent uh, time with him, I hope, to be able to um, really, really have a great time tonight. Um, we will also introduce his uh, cash handles, right? So you can tip the artist tonight and uh, buy him a gallon of gas, buy him a cup of coffee, uh, maybe buy him a whole tank of gas. What, you know, that's fine too. Uh, gas is expensive and he needs to get around. So uh, we will be uh, asking for tips for our feature tonight. Uh, all right, so uh, open mic listers, you got um, 45 minutes. Uh, four to five. Uh, there is no restriction on content at all whatsoever. You can say shit and dick and pussy and all those great, wonderful words. The only thing you're not allowed to bring is any hate speech whatsoever. If I feel you're a threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby, gone, and not allowed the fuck back in. All right. So you just, you just got to be grown. That's all, right? Just be grown. Uh, trigger warnings are not mandatory. Uh, this is a live poetry open mic. Please understand, you may hear anything, anytime. If you feel the need to turn off your camera, mute your device, leave the room, that is totally okay. We will understand. And uh, if you feel the need to use a trigger warning, we will champion that for you and support that. But please understand that that is not a necessary, uh, a necessary thing here. All right, the I have on the open 
the message I have Julia is Malaysia. Right? Damn, my Chromebook's already getting behind. Here, let me turn off my camera right quick. I got Julia Matthews, Paul Corman Roberts, Robert Fleming, Kenneth Peterson, and R. Chanel. Now, I know Rich Boucher is here, and he's probably going to want to read. Uh, and Rich, you look just amazing, by the way. If anyone else wants to read who I missed, I do apologize. The chat moves very quickly, uh, and sometimes uh, mistakes happen, and I might miss someone's name. If that happens, please just put your name in again or send me a direct message, and I will uh, remedy that immediately. Uh, we're all human, but we do try to minimize the mistakes we make on the show. All right, so let's go. Um, keep yourself muted during performances, but feel free to unmute and clap and cheer and be crazy in between. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, if you need anything or have any questions, uh, you can DM me directly. The chat is available for you to use, not abuse, all right? Uh, so please keep the chat also amiable. All right, let's go. Read, not read. Exactly right. Uh, I know. All right, Mary. Uh, Mary, Marsha, I got you. I hope I said that right. I'm just going to put Mary for now in case I did not. All right. So this is a, an oldie but goodie uh, poem as I get the mic open for all of you tonight. Uh, this is from my book, Butterflies and Lies. It is untitled. It is a poem I wrote in a Tumblewords workshop out of El Paso, Texas, back when um, the great Donna Snyder was alive. Everything above these shoulders is the junkyard, columbarium, cranium, plane crash. What is memory is remembering, is forgetting, is my failed daily to-do list. You forgive you, forget you, let you dissipate into never existing. Still you seep from my mind down the corridor of my throat stowed away on the backs of tears too old to be shed. You lodge in the gauntlet of my granite gut, remain there until time has succumbed to surrender and been documented as historical fact. Impossible to swallow when I am ch choking on unspoken afterthoughts of shock, life lessons, on the job training, Middle wife like birthright, nothing but lies to my mind of moving on. Of the impossible guilt of these bronze statued hands that still cling to the fabric of a time too long ago, I forget to forget. You rip through me in the dark hours of the midnight. Mauve purple contusions post mortem speckled with stars on this hardened heart that harbors the sickness of your memory, the immortalized imprint of your fingerprint melted into my exsanguinated pen. You make my effort to write no longer worthwhile while I lie to myself that you will pass through me, that the pain is weakness leaving my body and I will once again feel like I haven't died this vicious, delicious death in the moments before I wake each day. Thank you all so very much. Let's get this show started. Unmute your mics as we welcome all the way from Malaysia, the one and only Julian Matthews. Woo, woo, woo. What's up, sir? I have not seen you in a minute. Welcome back to The Word is Right. I cannot hear you yet. Let me make sure my device's volume is up because shit, that's happened before. Try disconnecting and reconnecting to the audio maybe. Okay. Sometimes when you, you click the little carrot, that little like triangle thing on the top right of your icon, you can disconnect audio and reconnect audio. And sometimes that works. Also, if you have a headset plugged into your device, sometimes that will also uh, change the sound. Oh, it says you're connecting to audio. Yeah, let's see. 
No, I can't hear anything. And there's no headset. What about a Bluetooth or something? Do you want to go out and try to come back in? And all right, I got you, Julian. I'll get you back on the mic when you come back in, okay? All right. We'll keep going. Paul, Corman, Robert, are you ready, sir? Uh, yeah, sure. How long do I get on this thing? For uh, up to five minutes. We're doing five minutes each on the open mic. But you don't right. have to take the full time, and you're welcome if you do. All right. Okay. I'll do. Uh, I'll do two pieces here. Um, shout out. Shout out, of course, to Mark States. Uh, so glad to be here for his feature tonight, and thank you for having uh, having all of us. Um, but uh, Mark, uh, Mark hosted my second book launch over 10 years ago. And I just, all I, all I remember was a book, a book my, my, set, my second book, which I'm completely ashamed of and hate these days. It makes me cringe to read those poems, but I, I just remember after the feature was done, Mark just said, like, all right, let naked capitalism begin. And, uh, and, and it, did, it, did, it did begin at that point. It was pretty, I'll never forget that moment, Mark. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> I'll just get on with the poems here. Uh, this is the things that cost you too much. Lids on lockdown, slow backward tilt of your neck to greet morning's delight. I don't recognize myself. Survey the dissipating dew. How is this gendered bridge still at my feet with no nice way to say that legacies are what is only remembered later? Collaboration and sunlight have become inseparable. The tang ridden aftertaste of our marriage refuses all lies. Something dry and vile howls in an abandoned playground behind the Catholic complex, a magnet for worming vortice attached like my cat's fleas. This particular darkness clinging to our imprints long after the imprinting press becomes a pillar of dust in the deep basins lurking just eastward. So we call in the psychic EMTs to shock us back to status quo stable. We're up and not crying, at least not yet before those same shadows mark the marching of today's quota of light, measuring their opportunism, wondering yet again, is this dichotomy too simplistic? That's because this is a kind of poetry as seen on TV, a telenovela inside a soap opera, inside a melancholy, which like memory, we repress in that place we weren't supposed to be weren't supposed to see if only someone hadn't lost us in the wind tunnels that formed like a rip in the space-time fabric. Dust devils, say the colonizers of the plains and glacial valleys, baking quietly beneath iron lights and now missing the shadows that felt so fearsome once, that fear we held alone and now how we need each other and our roots trailing down hillsides, needing different purchases in different artifacts and different creations we never thought we would see or know. And I will read one more poem. And this is called uh, Why Poetry is Dead, because every couple of years somebody publishes a high profile op-ed that says poetry is dead. And they list off all the reasons poetry is dead or when it died or whatever. So this is, I'm gonna definitively define here why poetry is dead. Because it won't make you rich. There are no poetry billionaires. There are no poetry millionaires. There are no poetry thousandaires. There are no poetry agents. There are no poetry managers. Well, there are, but poetry managers are even more broke than poets. Poetry doesn't have a retirement plan. Poetry doesn't own a yacht. Poetry don't really get down with yacht rock. Poetry never makes the first move. Poetry costs more than it makes. Poetry eats more than it works. Poetry refuses to control the center. Poetry's application to the country club always gets tossed. Poetry is insolvent. Poetry is bankrupt. Poetry has no hedge fund, isn't listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Poetry chooses the path of most resistance. Every hostile takeover of poetry has failed. The holy ghost of the poet Rupi Kaur might have been compels you. Poetry moves the king. How can poetry even be alive? What does it mean to be alive? Poetry moves the king into the attack square. What does it mean to be dead? Poetry is viral, check. Poetry has no cure. You can't stop talking about how it's dead. Checkmate, you're dead. 
because poetry dies every other year, just like rock and roll. Thank you, Marissa, and thank you, Word is Right. Oh, let's go. Oh, no poetry thousand airs. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and us as poetry agents, um, <laughs> we are like so much more broke too. Oh, that's true. All right. Um, but let's, you know, let, let's, let's work on changing that. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. All right. Julian Matthews is back. Let's see if we can get, if we can hear his audio now. Testing. Ah, it's Julian Matthews. Sorry, I didn't mean to squeal so much, but this man is like brilliant and he's coming all the way from Malaysia. So I'm really glad he's here. All right. Uh, that means Robert Fleming, you're on deck and Kenneth uh, uh, Peterson, you, you're in too. Okay. Can you hear me now? That's good. Great. Can I share screen, please? Oh, great. Unfriend. I can't unfriend a dead friend on Facebook. I can't delete the number on my phone either. What am I expecting, a phone call? A text message? Heaven really needs to expand its cell phone coverage. Hell only makes collect calls. I never pick up those. I know it's just a spammer trying to sell me something I don't need. They must have a lot of free upgrade plans down there. Their marketing teams are killers. Friendship online can be a tenuous thing. Is a friend on social media a real friend or just a means to an end, like a creeper on a wall clinging to a boundary or a border between two countries without immigration checks or customs clearance? I have too much baggage anyway. Always need to unload. I grieve at birthday reminders. I reread your last post, your last messages. You're a haunted house with broken windows. I pick in to see your ghost. Come out and play, I say. You laugh, smile then walk away. Not my time already, but why did yours come so early? It's like you took an elevator up and pressed the top button. You should have gotten off earlier. You missed my floor. I'm still here and all the elevators are broken. They only go down now. I take the staircase sometimes just to hear the echo of you. I could use a hug tonight. You give lots of those up there. Do you receive any from the angels? I never ever saw God as the huggable kind, just an old guy with a long beard with a mean streak, put us all on one planet and left us here. Go forth and multiply, we overdid it, I think. How do you embrace eight billion people? Even a thousand friends online is too much. One hug truly given is all I need tonight. But ghosts and gods don't hug, do they? Invisibly is too high a wall to cross for now. It's a boundary you can't see, but always there, a border or a map made up of broken lines. This border between us is made up of broken hearts. I'm just glad there's no unfriend button on your end because I'm never gonna unfriend you on mine. Oh. Oh. One more. Uh, absolutely. Hologram me. Look, see, I'm a hologram of me. I'm sometimes here, sometimes there. An avatar who can be anywhere. But how can this be? Because anything is possible in 23. I'm both particle and wave. You see, great Scott. It's everything I crave. Sitting in my underwear in my man cave. Then beam wherever you want me save. Augment my reality. Turn me into virtuality. The visible made invisible, then visible again. Wipe out my flaws, blemishes, and deceits. Transform me into bits. Hit send and receive and reconfigure me into more bits. But at the other end, here, bite me. Take a bite off my bites. Chew me out and see the once real is now made unreal and in-person man gone out and out virtual. AI made me in my own image, more or less, even made me more saintly and virtuous, a holier than thou hologram of an unholy hollow man. Look, see, I'm he and he is me. AI has set my bits free, 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 set them free. But wait, am I still me, me? This a me or a me, maybe, and you? Are you still you? A hologram of a hollow woman, but in a hollow world, no one is real, right? 
So how come you can still see right through me? And I can't see through you at all. Between us, there's still an invisible wall. My AI did not give me new eyes, man. Hollow man cannot transcend wall man. We can reconfigure and refill, but not figure you out still, sigh. Back to the digital drawing board, AI. I'm just a particular particle of a particular particulate. Can articulate, but still cannot discriminate. I'm just a wave, can crash and burn. A failed beach can, or just another beach sperm. A mere hologram of just another hollow man. Flaws, blemishes, deceits and all. Still awaiting my own fall. Thank you. Oh, let's go. Julie Matthews, y'all unmute your mics. Please give it up for, for Julian. I'm so glad that your audio worked out. Yes, Woo yes, 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 Julian. yes, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Woo! I keep growing. I'll do this. I'll do Robert Kish, uh, and then um, an R Chanel. I'm going to break. I'm going to break. I'm going to go back to the open mic list. We got Rich, Mary, Matthew, and Generalissimo, Brian Franco. If I missed anyone, uh, please let me know and I will get you on. Uh, the, the whole list is amazing, right? So don't go anywhere. Uh, the entire show is going to be a wonderful time. All right, Robert Fleming, are you ready, sir? Good evening. I'm Robert Fleming, a visual poet from Lewis, Delaware to have a connection with our feature, Mark Slate. I put on my fur earmuffs so we can both have head coverings and be connected. I am, uh, I'm grateful today that uh, um, uh, my art was featured in an art show at uh, Camp Rehoboth, which opened today. It's the, huh. GLBT Center in Rehoboth, Delaware. Um, this series is based on the, st the style of Edward Degas, who was one of the Impressionist paintings in the 1800s and did uh, a large series of uh, ballerinas. And this is my first um, one. My series is called Bears at the Ballet Bar, and the medium is uh, digital graphics. The, the two biggest challenges uh, for this series was um, image selection. You know, bears are uh, four-legged creatures, and there's, there's only uh, sometimes when they are vertical, like scratching against a tree. So it was hard to find these vertical images of a bear. Um, the other thing which was a challenge was um, the number of layers of the image. So in this image, the ballet bar, the bear, and the tutu are all separate images. So to layer them correctly to give the right effect is a challenge. And this is, um, more bears at uh, the ballet bar. Again, continuing with uh, Degas' example, where you're showing the back of the body. And this is the front um, of the image with the bears looking forward. Um, another one of the challenges um, for this piece was uh, trying to put the bear's feet into ballet slippers. I tried for about an hour and didn't succeed. So I kept the bear's feet just on top of the slippers, not in them. And this is my, this is my third year in this art show at, uh, at Camp Rehoboth. And each year I have tried to do something fun, but more difficult. Uh, next year, my target will be called uh, Bears at the Trapeze. And I will be trying to do images like these uh, with bears. And I will be trying to use the sun bear, which is a bear 
found mostly in China, which has more of a vertical body. And greetings uh, from Delaware and from the Bears. Ah, wonderful, Robert Fleming. Thank you so much um, for your contributions. It's very interesting, right? If you've never thought about using um, visual um, work in your literary work, it is a lot of fun and definitely stretches your uh, critical thinking skills, your belief muscles, and um, and, and your creativity. Uh, Teresa Galleon is in the room. Uh, she's my mama, yay. Uh, look at all the New Mexico poets showing out today. Very excited for y'all to uh, hear everyone in the room. So we got we got poets from Malaysia, overseas, and uh, here in New Mexico, so welcome everyone. I'm excited for the New Mexico poets to meet Mark States because he's, he's wonderful. All right, uh, next up we got Kenneth Peterson, R. Chanel, and then we're gonna break for our feature. We're gonna go back to the open mic list. If uh, anyone would like to read who is not on the list, please um, let me know. Uh, Kenneth, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, for many years, uh, Mark States was an uh, ornament in the in San Francisco Bay Area, and he uh, hosted a great many uh, poetry events. This is a poem that goes back about at least 15 years, uh, which I first read at one of his events. This is a Japanese form poem. Uh, when I was done with it, I, I, I asked my poet laureate, a neighbor and friend, uh, about it, and she didn't know what I was talking about. I found out that nobody knew what I was talking about. So I did some digging, and I found out that it had been obsolete for 1,300 years. So here we go. Chance. The job was finished, now for a special time, walking and talking. The way people do together in love, taking all that is offered in a time and space. From a regular schedule, I know just where she is. Again, I am so lucky. Parking is in front. At the entrance desk, they say she has not come for some time. It's called a Naga Uta, or a long, long song. That's, that's the only one I have right for right now. Thank you. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Kenneth, so much. Uh, by the way, I love a sunflower. So yes, it's, very, it's my favorite flower. You look very, very um, cheerful and happy. Um, so keep that background, please. Thank you. My, <laughs> sun, my sunflower and, and my iPhone work together to produce this. <laughs> The one positive thing for having an iPhone. All right, let's keep going. I'm just kidding. If y'all have iPhones, that's all right. Um, next up, we got Arshanel. Now, Arshanel is amazing. She's been a feature here at The Word is Right. Um, she is just such a beautiful human being. I'm so glad that she came back and y'all get to hear her. Uh, and then after Arshanel, we'll break for Mark and we'll go back to the open mic list. Greetings, everybody. Thank you, Marissa. Um, thank you for... Uh, I, I have no connection with the, um, the feature tonight. I would just happen to be on Facebook and I saw Marissa's post. So I was like, okay, um, I'll go ahead and um, join tonight. The poem um, I will be reading is the first poem. It was actually picked up um, by a publisher that was um, that I had met on Instagram and it's called Chasing a Dream and it's available everywhere online um, ex in its printed form, not in its digital form as my other poems. This is called Chasing a Dream. I spent countless time and money on a promise. I've done my best work wounded on a cracked and unstable foundation. Instead, I've listed regrets, instantly grieved by my personal suffering. I've cried in my car, cried in my sleep for my God, for my Heavenly Father to end my pain, release me from this misery. 
Yet here I am, another morning, above ground, not living abundantly, just surviving from decision to situation, chasing a dream. Technology was supposed to be my way out, my advancement. I am a woman that is deeply plagued. Why must I censor my feelings if I am hurt, mad, happy, or sad? There is a valid reason I am disheartened and my eyes are downcast. I've been praying out of anguish and despondency, of being broken, provoked, and controlled, and dissuaded from chasing my dream. What have I done now? Can't I even speak? I pour out my soul to the Lord using words through poetry. I still can't figure out where I went wrong. So much soul searching, conversations, hesitations. Has my conscience asking questions? If overthinking is part of my process, how do I know when I'm unnecessarily worrying? I am defeated and I feel like a failure while the ground is no longer beneath me, grasping and clawing, chasing a dream. Thank you. And um, one more poem. And this poem was actually featured in my friend's first book that's available um, in its printed form at Walmart and Barnes and Nobles um, called Loving Me Through It. And it's called She's Not. She's not the stereotypical. Created in a godly likeness, she was created to love, by love. Every dip of her eyelash is from a path that was paved, for she is called for his purpose. God alone can ease her pain. She's not the stereotypical, created in his image. Many waters cannot quench his love for her. It burns like a mighty flame. She's not the stereotypical. Thank you all. Yes, let's go, our Chanel. Woo! Oh man, if you wanna watch her full feature, any of the full features from our past uh, poets who who are in the room like Rich Boucher, uh, Teresa Gallion, like there's there, Robert Fleming, like there's there's so many incredible words to write poets who have come through the doors here, uh, and, and there's so many um, like hundred over I don't even know hundreds of videos on the Word is Right's YouTube page. You can access for free and go and watch. Uh, these incredible features. Julian Matthews, his, yeah, right. I mean, it's like, it doesn't stop. So now Mark States' um, feature gets to be up there as well. So I'm so, so excited about that as we welcome him and, uh, and his feature. Feel free if you guys would like to put your social medias in the chat um, and connect with one another. Uh, this is a, a platform that is always drawn on many different crowds and many different organizations across many different platforms, live, in person, online, Instagram, Facebook, like it's pulled a lot of people together. Um, we've always been a melting pot for connectivity um, of the, um, of the, of the dying poetry, right? Uh, so let's make sure it doesn't um, totally die and, uh, and connect with each other. So uh, I met Mark a while ago during, um, COVID, right, during all of our online um, stuff. And he's not like anyone else I've ever met, which I know you probably hear a lot, but those who are here to support Mark know what I mean. Those who don't know what I mean, you're going to know what I mean in about 30 minutes. Uh, and so we were planning for the uh, features from through the summer into the fall. And I invited Mark to come and feature. And it was like so hard because he wasn't going to be here till September. And I even said, hey, Mark, I have a slot to open in August. Would you like the August slot? But of course, he can make it sometimes. Um, uh, and I was lagging, so I'm going to take a video off as hopefully the Chromebook catches back up. <clears throat> because I do not want to mess up his bio as I read his bio. Uh, I will put his cash handles in the chat as well. So if you're feeling generous tonight, would like to buy him a cup of coffee uh, or a gallon of gas, you could put a couple bucks in his, um, in his uh, 
tip jar, if you will. All right, here we go. Mark States is founder of Berkeley's long-running weekly open mic Poetry Express, and it's host from 2002 to 2011. He also facilitated public speaking for poets workshops at the Berkeley Art Center from 2004 to 2007. Mark is, we would say, well known in the Bay Area <laughs> and Los Angeles poetry circles for being a fine writer with a dramatic flair. I love a dramatic flair in presenting his work. Whether you're on the internet or in person, Mark's features are unique and full of surprises. As longtime Bay Area poetry host Dale Jensen once said, when Mark states features, you never know what you're going to get, but it's always going to be good. Mark has appeared in such print publications as Electronic Corpse, Oakland's Neighborhoods, Poet Talk, San Gabriel Valley uh, Poetry Quarterly, and online in Dashboard Auras, PoeticDiversity.com, and PoetryMagazine.com. Mark has poems in the 2022 anthology from Finishing Line Press titled COVID Isolation and Hope, Artists Respond to the Pandemic, and Poetry, The Best of 2022 from Bell Press. He currently resides in Charlotte, North Carolina, where he has been enjoying a career resurgence thanks to Zoom. You can find him, Mark states, Mark dot states and the number one on, on Facebook. You can also go to the Word is Rights Facebook page and read his entire bio and get all of his links directly here. His cash handles are PayPal, dreamboogie at yahoo.com. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for our feature reader tonight, the one and only Mr. Mark Stay. Let's go, Mark. Woo. Mark. Woo. Glad to see you featuring Break a Leg, Mark. <laughs> Poets do not break legs. Uh, we bust jaws. Thank you so much, uh, Marissa, <laughs> and to The Word is Right for this opportunity to feature. Uh, one word of caution, I do not talk much in between poems, so buckle up. Without any further interruption, I present to you Inside Outrageous, side one. Big table abuts big desk, creating an L-shaped barrier in an even bigger one-person office in a hallway full of such offices. Eight piles of paper on table, stacked neatly in two rows of four, Check off numbers in bank statements and check off numbers in daily deposit report printouts as they are determined to match. It's Bank Reconciliations Week for my position. 40 hours of checking off at a certain rhythm, a certain pace, a certain focus of mind over anything else that matters in life. Check this, check that. Check the credit card receipts because something does not match. Precious little adorns this office except the puppy calendar thumbtack to the wall above light switch next to door. They are big on efficiency here. If one stays focused on their tasks, there is no need to know what year it is. Office windows which do not open are covered by thick and durable slatted blinds which seemingly have no mechanism to open them either. So if you want to observe any ruckus going on outside or whether it is snowing yet, you have to grab one slat in each hand, yank them apart, then stick your head through as a peeping Tom unmasked. The blinds are basic white, a hospital cloak white, and I just bought this six pack of crew socks from Walmart white. The blinds contrast well with the eggshell white guest chair in front of them, a plastic chair with a concave depression. Like a grumpy old alcoholic, guest chair has not seen a piece of ass for years. And why would it? Nobody stops by to visit or to share office gossip. The hallway of the accounting department is cold and silent as a morgue. As you pass a door with light extricating itself from underneath it, you know someone is in there, meticulously slicing scalpel through flesh, counting bones, measuring weight, extracting tissue samples for forensic testing. It could be your expense report on the autopsy table, your job's cadaver in a canvas bag, on a gurney, being wheeled away to an even cold storage locker. 
Walking this hallway is an ambling procession through purgatory, questioning one's ultimate fate in the off-white glare of forever. Rapid heartbeats fill your mouth with taste of regret. One's body sweat a steaming bowl of New England clam chowder. Occasionally, one can hear a muffled doom it behind one of those closed doors, followed by a moaning file cabinet drawer, obese with the reckonings of a lifetime's worth of actions and transactions. Every moment accounted for, judged right, checked off, reconciled and initialed, then walked down the hall for a superior's judgment and initials. I am a temp. None of this bothers me. Big desk, big office, a plate on the door with my name on it. Perhaps not a dream job, just a job where one may dream in peace. I miss this job. It checked off so many boxes for me. This song isn't for you, it's for me, a true MC. It's what he'll do just to see if he still has it and if his skills still master. I don't write anymore, just swallow the pen till it drops to the floor of my soul. The pen dances and ink splashes, the pen writhes by itself. It's hell to go through things and come out the other end, nutrients sucked out and stripped down to the waste. In the evening, the chest is beaten, itself to a pulp. Friction is the only way to work out the contradictions. I said it all before in the days of yore. There's no messing with the legend till you got your hand out looking for a lesson. A few lines thrown out, shown the door. Maybe there's something in them you can use. You can make a mountain out of pebbles if you collect enough of them. If it's worth it to you, you can score. But I don't even write anymore. It's a long way down to the floor. To claw your way to the top, you got to have both hands free. It's not about sitting on a shore under an umbrella, sipping coladas. It's fighting piranhas for what's left of your guts after lunch. So I don't care who gets it or if its readers digested, just have to let it writhe by itself. Man, I tell you, that Mark States is bigger than Eminem. Are you out of your mind? Brickhead, why would you even say something like that? Because m ms only five foot nine. In tribute to Menu by June Jordan and Sarah Miles. We got In Your Face Slam. We got Bonus Point Slam. We got Mustard and Honey Nut Slam. We got Slam in a Tin Can and other end of the month delicacies. We got Time to Shred Slam, but we ain't got Academic Slam. We got Slam on Wonder Bread. We got Slam in a Skillet. We got Slam in a Tin Can with Mysterious Globs of Dew. We got slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, for the 8.7 score. We got slam in aisle nine next to the Vienna sausages, but we ain't got academic slam. We got drunken breath slam. We got incestual slam. We got corner pocket slam. We got slam movies and slam porno scripts. We got heavy metal slam, hip hop, hope you like to watch me itch Michael Jackson. Woohoo! Style slam, but we ain't got no academic slam. We got smoke flavored slam. We got slam and crack rehab. We got victim slam. We got slam orgasm and slam. <gasps> oh, wake me when he's done. But we ain't got 
academic slam. We got masturbation slam. We got gangster lean slam with 20% less fat. We got robotic slam. We got slam babies choking on secondhand fillies. We got slam in a tin can tossed into holiday food barrels, but we ain't got academic slam. We got visceral slam. We got catastrophic slam. We got rhythmic neglect slam, begging for audience scraps of leftover applause. We got recycled slam and slam reputation and the best effing slam team in the whole nation, but we ain't got no academic slam. Look both ways before you cross my mind. Brother, can you paradigm? Look both ways before you cross my mind. For both thoughts unheard and feelings unkind. For the madcap driver peering through the windshield's Venetian blinds, who believes a crosswalk should be renamed, cross run for your life. Look both ways before you cross my mind. Because it was just my imagination running away with me. Mind sale, half off. The doctor says you'll pay the price later down the road. Look both ways before you cross my mind. If you want a dirty mind, there's some sin apps for that impulses to transmit and receive. If you're receptive, I have neurons ready to fire across the breach. Some random thoughts looking for their niche. So zippity doo da, unzip for me today. But if you're running train on a one track mind, it's best not to be tied down. The grammar police be charging me incorrect syntax for half the stuff I be thinking. To be or be to, that is the question. So look both ways before you cross my mind. Before you cross my mind, be aware of the stop signs in my eyes. Obey all turn signals and yield to the right of way. <laughs> but don't mind me, says the telepath. Man, you got some nervous tissue barging in here like that, sticking your frontal lobe into my business. I hope when you get to the memories concerning you, they hurt you just as much as they hurt me. And when I coldly say, I'm sorry, the words burn like battery acid on bare flesh. A person is not truly free until they think of themselves, by themselves, and for themselves. So help you look both ways before you cross my mind. If you get too far ahead of yourself, the wrinkles will be good to your tire tread. So forehead or anti-tail, that is the question. Don't be the one who gives away your two cents too freely and then not have the bus fare or gas money to get home. It's better to keep a piece of your mind with you in case of emergency. Look both ways before you cross my mind and bring an umbrella before you join me in a brainstorm session. Make sure your trip and a half isn't a slip and a fall, stutter talk, grip and a wall, pocket dialing a booty call in the paint slam drunk. Because if you want to play mind games, try brain teasers. This is a search and seizure. Hands up against the brain wall and spread those legs. Left foot blue dot, right arm green. A little twisted if you know what I mean. For you have the right to remain thoughtless. Anything you think can be used against you in a court of public opinion. 
look both ways before you cross my mind. If you got a disagree mentality, you won't get any argument for me. My brain waves goodbye, just fine. Look both ways before you cross my mind. Imagine, if you will, a lover's spat on a faraway world not terribly different from our own, except the species is telepathic. The secret messages are calling to me endlessly. They call to me across the air. The messages across the atmosphere, they whisper in your ear. They're calling everywhere. I hear you ringing in my ear, but you still won't call to see how I'm doing. It's all talk, 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 and Worry about yourself again, isn't it? I scratch the brow of my third eye, wondering, when are you going to feel the my side of the ethereal like you used to before you took a walk and kept it for yourself? I hear you singing and my heartburn again, but you still won't dance with your mirror image. It's all about walking around the truth and worrying about your own reputation again, isn't it? I scratch the surface of a puddle, wondering, when are you going to skinny dip at the deep end of our conversation like you used to? Before you took a minute for your own and threw away the rest of your life, stripped the steel and stabbed yourself with the wooden handle of the steak knife. I hear you slinking in the back of my mind, asking, is this where the last nerve is? But it's just an echo you were chasing, isn't it? You scratched the side of my skull, wondering, if I'm going to let you in on the secret message like I used to. Mission Imperfect. Friday, 3 p.m., phone rings. Your mission, Mark, if you choose to accept it. Our client, an unnamed greeting card company needs four attempts to disassemble display shelves and racks at an undisclosed pharmacy in the Bay Area. Assemble and install new displays, then restock them. The business will be open, and it is of the utmost importance that you complete these tasks without interrupting their course of business, neither disturbing nor being noticed at all by the store's customers or staff. Do you accept this assignment? See, that's how Tempin was in those days. No submitting resumes. No three or four interviews. The agency calls. You accept it or not. And that's it. Good. Monday, 7 a.m. We'll call with address and whom to ask for. Monday, 8.50 a.m. Four of us wait under tree 15 feet from pharmacy entrance for our contact, Greg. Three men, one woman. Four somewhat introverted strangers stumble through idle conversation while studying each approaching man as if a watch we are not sure still ticks. <clears throat> one of us clears throat. Greg will ask which one of us shall lead. I don't want to, but I've worked for them before, 
and know what they want. We agree. Sounds reasonable. I like this modest man and sigh of relief, worried Greg might choose me to lead, the only white person among us. And I do not need any authority, just the paycheck. Thank you. Greg arrives, repeats instructions, tells us to pile old shelving and greeting cards under same tree, says he will return, and drives away. The shelving in the store must have seen World War II and somehow survived the bomb blast. Plastic guardrails, half separated from wood already, shriek and groan like the Titanic taking on water and keeling over as we remove them. A constant stream of dust requires frequent sweeping of aisle. We could have finished this in two days, but we had to remain aware of any customer walking in and being very, very quiet. If a customer approaches our aisle, we walk out the other end, find a place to stand like a mannequin until they leave. We say little to each other, the four of us, aside from basic short requests, except for the woman, who answers everything with, my husband says blah, 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 and the Bible says yada, 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 even when asked her name. So we codename her, my husband says. Only once a customer complains about our noise and dust. Although a twin of Aunt B from the Andy Griffith show, she sneers and scowls like a Klingon warrior. Pharmacy owner with twisted pretzel stick eyebrows tells us to wait outside until she leaves. We do not care. It is, for us, an extra half hour break. Thursday, 9 a.m., final day. Greg drops off new greeting cards to inventory, price tag and stock, and an extra display rack. Two of us assemble the rack in silence, then awe at our work of art. Thursday, 10.45 a.m., it starts to rain. Boxes of new greeting cards are outside under tree. We scurry to retrieve boxes. My back is turned, lifting heavy box from sidewalk. Here crewmates say, damn, will you look at that? Rain stops. Sun lights up the sidewalk. A woman steps out of her car, and the whole block has frozen in time to watch. She is Grace Jones Fine, or Nefertiti has returned in all her glory, and she knows it fine. Sunlight ricochets off her smile. She exudes confidence. She glances at her loyal subjects as she walks past each man, woman, even a dog on a leash. All except for, my husband says, who grabs Lee Temp's arm with both hands like a crab leg she is trying to pry open. Do you see that white man staring at that black woman? She squeals several times. Lead Temp was in a trance, staring, and could not answer. Finally, he says, why wouldn't he? He's got eyes, too. <laughs> she is beautiful. He's a good man. Did I tell you I liked him?
Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, y'all. Unmute your mics. Give it up for our feature tonight. The one and only Mark States. Let's go. Woo! Woo! Nice job. Right, dude. Woo! So many incredible lines, right? So many absolutely incredible, incredible lines. Well, maybe if Mark's going to stick around tonight, maybe he will grace us with an encore to close the show. Who knows? Sure. Uh, sure. sure. Yeah, all right. That means y'all gotta see. Uh, you, yeah, we never know, right? You, you never know what's gonna happen when Mark States is around, uh, <laughs> and so, so y'all just you can't go because then you won't know. But I hope now you know what I know, and the rest of us uh, who are here to support him know. It is just brilliant. Thank you so super much for your set. Now we were talking a lot that if if uh, we were in a brewery or a cafe or an art gallery, we would have the hat going around and we would be asking folks to put a couple bucks in the hat for a tip for our feature. There's 22 people in the room tonight. If everybody put two or three or four dollars in the hat for our feature, that would be a wonderful payday for him. Uh, sometimes, you know, we all go to a lot of these events. And it's very difficult for us to pay our features a lot each time. But if all of us collectively as a community do a little bit each time, that's a lot. And so that's, you know, that's kind of what we're, we're, we're asking for is everyone just to kind of come together uh, and send him a couple bucks, two, three, four, 20, whatever you want, whatever you got. What, what's in your, what's in your pocket, right? What's in your couch? And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not gonna send Mark States $3 because that makes me fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong because <laughs> everyone who said that actually sent him the money, it'd be a lot different, right? This is what we're talking about. Just do something. Don't do nothing is the takeaway uh, for that. Uh, Mark's PayPal is uh, dreamboogie at yahoo.com. If you now, Mark, you did not give me um, uh, a, um, a cash app. Is that your only is PayPal your only mode of receiving tips? When it comes to technology, I'm like uh, uh, Leroy Jethro Gibbs on the NCIS. <laughs> I'm old school. That's I still okay. have a flip phone. I love that. I love that. Right. So maybe, yeah. So let, you know, let's go. If you have Cash App, you're welcome to send me Marissa Prada, M A R I S S A P R A D A. Uh, send that to me via Cash App with a note, please, that says Mark States or Mark's features. So I know what it's for, and I will forward that on to Mark. Uh, we do do that just as a courtesy for our features. I do not have Zella though, so I can't help you with that. But there are other there are other hosts here at Word Is Right who do. So if you only have Zella and that's it, um, you can also send money. You can mail in money. I've had people do that before. That is okay to do. Also, uh, firstborn carrier pigeon, whatever. Zero excuses. <laughs> on why this man should not get a tip, all right? <laughs> Just do it. It's okay. We're here to support. It doesn't matter how it gets here as long as it gets here. Uh, so just do something. Don't do nothing. Uh, and, and we can continue uh, to keep this show going and Mark can continue to keep his stuff going uh, because that was an incredible set, right? So I'm going to ask everyone to just unmute their mics again and just really, really share some love with our feature Mark States tonight. Mark, you did a great job. And you, as you and I have discussed on more than one occasion, uh, your preparation uh, has certainly rewarded. You did a great job and I can see, uh, and it's easy to see and discern uh, exactly how much preparation you put towards this. All right, thank you so much, Rich. You're and Rich would know, he put so much, you know, Rich is mm -hmm. like one of the hardest movie poets I know. Yes. So um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad you're here, Rich, as well. Um, all right, so we're going to do you. this. We're going to go down the rest of the open mic list. Open micers can take up to five minutes if you would like, but uh, please do not take longer. If you need to know how much time you have, let me know. I will um, keep track of that for you. Uh, you don't have to take all the time. If you want to read something just short and quick, boom, that's okay, too. Uh, but so far on the open mic list, I have Rich Boucher, Mary Marsha, and I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. Please let me know if I'm wrong. I am totally all about the small things. Matthew Descovia, Generalissimo, Brian Franco, Anthony Harris, MD Live is in the house. Uh, Teresa Galleon and Cindy Shaw. Chatham is uh, going to uh, wrap up the open mic list. Unless I, oh, Doc Jenning and Doc, Doc Jenning. Uh, 
Doc Jenny in the house. Uh, so I got you, sir, on, on the open mic list. We'll have, um, we'll have Mark States finish us up with on the very end. All right, are you ready, uh, Senor Boucher? That sounds Monsieur Monsieur Boucher. Well, if you want to call me Monsignor, that's fine. But I'm an atheist, so I'll, <laughs> from you, I'll take it as a compliment. But uh, as you know, there yeah. is no such thing as God, and I'm not uh, a faith a faith person. But uh, here we are. Thank you, Marissa. And uh, you look really cute with your cat ears. Um, so thank you in return to what you said earlier. Uh, two poems tonight. Uh, this first one uh, is inspired by a great, great adult actress named Elena Koshka. She is very enjoyable to watch and look at, and she's very spirited uh, in her performances. Um, Elena, E-L-E-N-A, Koshka, K-O-S-H-K-A. Um, and uh, this is called... How can I express in just a few words what has taken me five seconds to understand? I asked the adult film star if she would love me for a little while. This was at the Expo Convention Booth Arena Concourse Place, where she was signing autographs and taking pictures with all of her admirers who admired her, much in the same way that I admired her. Upon hearing my request, she looked at me with an expression of a lovely and heartfelt shock. Her shock was beautiful and sexy, of course, because she was adult and because she was film star. She held my gaze for a few moments, and in that time I thought about my life and how weird it was that I was still alive and how strange it was that people still sometimes loved me when I couldn't see any reason for the love. The other onlookers to this interaction had no idea what was going on, and they milled about like people who aren't me often do when a thing is happening that they don't think is happening. The adult film star's look of shock melted just then into a smile small enough to fit onto her lips, and she then informed me that I was sweet, which was nice, but in every honesty, she wasn't telling me something I didn't already know. They only give each pilgrim autograph and photo seeker about a minute with the adult film star. So I was already under enough pressure as it was. Everyone had to make the most of this once in a lifetime experience. The guy right before me used his chance to just touch the hem of her robe and be healed. And the adult film star healed him. Uh, yay, Hosanna. My time was running out, and I didn't want an autograph or a Polaroid with her. I just wanted to know if this love thing was real. And if so, could I have some of her love for a while? And this poem uh, was recently published in a edition of the Fixed and Free Quarterly. This is called uh, The Milk Brother. I had gone out with Clover for a while. She was perfectly lovely as a person and perfectly lovely. We dated. We shared a milkshake and we looked at each other across pillows. We had intimacy on some lovely sunny summer afternoons during the blooming of our short-lived but passionate relationship. It didn't work out, though. It was just one of those things that happen all the time where you're meant to be with someone, but it isn't meant to be. And then after we parted ways, which we did incredibly amicably, Craig went out with her too. But that was after Clover and I. So Craig and Clover happened after Clover and me were a thing that was. I didn't know Craig, but I ran into Clover one night at the same supermarket, and she was nice to me and introduced me to Craig. Craig was a lot like me, except he had a different unit between his legs, very different hair than mine, and his eyes were a color that I didn't have. We were almost the same, but in one way, we were both the very same. We had both known intimacy with Clover, who had been intimate with the both of us separately, obviously. So Craig, having known Clover as biblically, 
as I had known her, was thus my milk brother, and as such I felt a tight bond against him. The night when I ran into him in Clover at the same supermarket left me musing and wondering all about Craig. I wondered how he was doing in college. She said they had some classes together. Were his studies going well? Was he eating well? He looked a bit thin. Was he happy? Did he even have any plans for his future? I had to care about him and wonder how he was doing. He was my milk brother. Thank you. Oh my God. I love Rich Bush. This is why I love Rich Bush. <laughs> Oh my God. You know, he, I remember that when I first met Rich uh, and I was doing my IG live show um, and I, I, I saw him perform live here and I bought his book because that's what I do. I buy poets books and then I read them on my IG live show. And I like to feature a lot of the New Mexico authors and Rich was there in the chat and he, he says, turn to page, whatever, whatever, and read this, whatever poem. <laughs> And it was uh, it was a Rich Boucher poem. <laughs> was that the poem about the really fantastic German lesbian no. lactation? No, it was the baby Jesus dick. Oh, uh, being told uh, by Jesus that yeah. it was going to be good at eating pussy. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Um, but see, he forgot. He didn't really know quite yet who I was. He like, I think he thought a little bit because I mean, my show was titled "What Words Wednesday." Um, <laughs> and it was an erotic show. Uh, and he says, "I challenged you to read it with a straight face," and I did. It was hella funny. Uh, it was wonderful, and that's when I was like, "Oh, I love this man. Uh, he's so wonderful." And this was the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Hearing you read my line about uh, the, the Jesus as an infant over your swaddling crib telling you that in the future you were going to be great at going down uh, was just a, a joy to behold. <laughs> yeah, we're also kind of twisted. So just so y'all know, um, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love my poet's friends. Let's go. All right, um, Mary Marcia, you are up next. And please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Matthew, you are on deck. Generalissimo, Brian Franco, you are in uh, to, after, after Matthew. Hello. Um, thank you, Mark, for getting me to come here and hear everyone. It's been wonderful. Uh, me and Mark go back to California days early on, so I decided that I would drop back into 2002, my first book long ago called From the Tenderness. And I think that, uh, I hope you'll like it. It's called Of Monkeys and Old Clothes. I'm writing to tell you white eye and mole have escaped from the San Francisco Zoo wearing your clothes, the ones you shipped to me years ago by Greyhound bus. 15 pounds and 15 inches, they've gone incognito, complete with pencil-lined mustaches, black caps. By now, they could be anywhere with my favorite sweater, the olive one you gave me, loose-knit, oversized as a punch bowl of banana casserole that the authorities left out overnight trying to lure them in like a photo of you wearing your Lake Tahoe sweatshirt or your marigold sundress caught in a storm. But instead, those paddest monkeys were spotted out on a ledge, trying on camisoles together. Kind of gets your attention. To know that you jumped from a second story window. I'm just glad that a snowdrift broke your fall. Please call me direct. I suspect you've seen those monkeys fumbling in a big bag of charcoal briquettes, trying to light a hibachi in the backyard like we used to, because a broiled banana peel was found in a leopard cage. A hungry raccoon 
would have eaten peel and all, whole, and a kangaroo rat would have gnawed it to pieces. You had to have helped them slip by the patrols without being seen. By now, they've shown you. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It's the living that matters. So nobody has to know you found them a job in some little coffee house, bakery in Massachusetts. And thank you. Um, do I have a moment for another poem? Or? Absolutely. Well, we've had to 214. Sleep of the Morpheus. While flying long distances, seabirds are constantly napping, closing one eye at a time, allowing one side of the brain to sleep, making the distance, switching on the other, unconscious until touchdown, literally flying blind. Sleep, the color of direction, its own determined pilgrimage. Wondrous thoughts seeping against wars, chisels beneath jokes that have gone on too long. Dream recommences loving, damp breath, emotional bait, head and feet daring, sleep searching for sleep, emotional bait, the half spoken runnels, tunnels, mining for interest. Sleep swallows whole, just a child once holed up. Lamp on, falls asleep, reading. Everything about him concerns me. Take me in your arms. Sleep like nestling woe. It's going to be all right. When I woke as a child, I took comfort from my father's quaking snores. On his back, the god wedged amongst ponderous pillows secure, loud, rattling the universe. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm, let's you. go, let's go, Mary. Thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm so glad to see so many new faces. Oh my God, something happened to Unmesh. What happened to Unmesh, where's your hair? Oh my God, something happened to Unmesh. What, what happened? Nothing, nothing. Just new, new hairstyle. You got a haircut, y'all. Oh no, he's new and improved new mesh. Oh no, he's new mesh 2.0. I don't know if I can handle this. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Oh my, when my pose changed, uh, it makes me nervous and a little excited too. Uh, <laughs> he's all motion. Let's go. All right. I'm very excited you're here in Mesh. Uh, thank you, Mary, so much for coming through. I love seeing new faces and new poems and new people because we're such a melting pot of awesomeness. We have Malaysia, we have India, we have uh, uh, East Coast, West Coast, we have the Desert Southwest. Um, we got poet laureates in the house and we got just regular people like me. So let's go. it's a super fun event. All right, Matthew Descovia, you're up now. Generalissimo Brian Franco. You are on deck, my twin, uh, MD Live. Anthony Harris, you are in two. Are you ready, Matthew? Is he still here? Matthew, are you still here? Let me check. Yeah, Matthew, you're up, sir. Let's see. He might have stepped away. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll skip Matthew for now. He might have stepped away, but Matthew, I got you. If you, when you come back, let me type in the chat. Because uh, sometimes I have to mute the device if I have other things like little humans going on in the background. All right, so Matthew, if you'd like to read, um, I will absolutely fit you in. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't hear him. So generally, Samuel, are you ready? Sure, I'll, I'm ready. Um, okay. Give me a couple seconds to pull up. I have three new poems. The first two are untitled. 
and they uh, oh they are they were written today in tumble words uh which was run by chris kayla and they the first one art is a product it is ginsburg's how been judged obscene by some and a masterpiece by other it is asking whether rothko's reds are art at all it is how history looks back on mistakes it is a product of an artist's state of mind at the moment the art is created. When I was a teenager, I saw a Rothko red square at the Hirshhorn and was duly unimpressed by it. I was a fan of Kandinsky and Leger. When a, when a college interpretive speech teacher suggested I read Howell, my life was not ready for it. I did not decide to become a poet. When I read it in my late thirties, after I decided I was a poet, I fell silent as if I had held my breath while reading it. While I revel in the jazz vocals of Cassandra Wilson and Patty Cathcart, I feel hooked whenever I hear Taylor Swift singing through the sound system of a Target store. I have no desire to purchase her music, but I get it. She is creating something that isn't exactly for me, but is art to millions. I dig a pizza joint that puts figs and celery on a pie nominated for a James Beard Award, but a burger from a roadside lunch counter that only serves burgers, cheeseburgers, fries, and hot dogs cut in half and seared cut side down on a flat top to me is just as worthy to be considered for a James Beard Award. Art is in the eyes, ears, and taste buds of the beholder, but it is in the being of the artist. Everything the artist is being has been and has yet to be. And here's a second piece. I hate telling this story. I was never enamored by poetry. Of course, there were no poetry writing exercises in my high school English classes. I took a creative writing course in college and did well in the poetry assignments, but was not enamored by it. Then one day when I was 28, I went into a coffee house in New York City. As I was working on a crossword puzzle, someone on a stage in the back of the room announced a poetry reading. I didn't think it was for me. I just wanted to do my crossword and drink my latte but the words got in the way. The words of strangers, they came in different forms and rhythms. They told stories, they made me think, they made me feel. When I got back to my place, they made me write. I did not know I was a poet. I started going to open mics. I listened, I learned, I wrote more. I let the other poets be my new professors. People like me who discover poetry later in life realize that there was poetry trapped inside them from day one. I was born this way. I identify as a poet as much as I identify as my parents' child. And I know I have one more inescapable destiny. And then because we are, this is the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah, and I'm gonna just preface this with a couple of terms that I'm using. Uh, one is oneg, and an oneg is a uh, social gathering after, after services at a synagogue that usually has specific food. Apples and honey are is something that we always eat uh, at the end of Rosh Hashanah, and shul is another term for a synagogue. So this is called Why Apples and Honey Are Trending on IG. There is something to be said about how honey dripping from a slice of apple can catch light, like a perfectly faceted yellow diamond. How the tartness of the juice from the apple merges against your taste buds with divine sweetness of bee nectar as it drips onto your silk tie. But you laugh it off because you are not the only person at the Rosh Hashanah Oneg that will be taking Marmon to Shul to the dry cleaners Monday. Thank you, everyone. Oh, let's go. Generally, you know, Brian Franco. Uh, Generalissimo is also a host here at The Word is Right. He has a show here the first and third Monday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Cafe Generalissimo. It's a wonderful show. Uh, he's also one of our wonderful poets at Red or Green Books. And uh, you can uh, read about him, his bio, all his links also on our website. Grab a copy of his book. Uh, and Terry Rose Jertson is in the house. I'm hoping that she wants to read tonight too because her book is going to be featured tomorrow on book club and so uh she's amazing uh i know she's she got she's got a lot of stuff going on and all of us have a lot of stuff going on but we can still connect um here on social media and through virtual open mics and um 
I think that that is just monumentally important to continue. So let's go. Matthew, welcome back. Did we get the tech issues fixed, sir? Let's see. What happened to Matthew? I lost him on my screen. Oh, no. I lost him again. Uh, um, I know he's experiencing technical issues. And you know what? Tech, tech sucks. And I see you're unmuted, but I don't hear you. Do you want to try again? You don't have to take your camera off if you don't want to. All right. Well, I let you, you, you tell me what you, what you want to do. I hear something. Wait, no, I don't hear anything. Oh, it's something. It's like, there's like a connection. Some shit is trying to like get in or out. You got headphones or something plugged in. Maybe it could be Wi-Fi too. Ah, oh, Terry Rose can read. Perfect. Cause I don't mind. I don't mind giving you a few minutes to to work that out if you if you need to. I see you're unmuted, but I don't hear anything. It it's like. I, I hear something, but it's very jumbly. I know, Doc. We're working on it. Just give him, give him a minute. Oh, I, I'm not like a tech genius. I don't know a lot about technology. All I can say is like, make sure you don't have any other devices on the Bluetooth or any other things plugged into your. Um, into your into your tablet or Windows phone or whatever phone. you're coming in on. You he can also have, dial it. <gasps> you may have to to log out and, and then come back in. He just did, he just did that, Doc. But Matthew, what you can also do is dial in on the phone number. Uh, there's a, a phone number that you can you can just call in instead of coming in through the internet. So if you would like to read and not have necessarily your face on the camera, you can also leave and come back through a uh, dialing in through the phone number instead of the Wi-Fi. Um, I really wanna hear this guy, he's been very patient. Um, so the best I could do, is just keep trying. We're, we're not going anywhere, we'll be here for a beat, okay? All right, so let's go, let's see if Matthew can do that. MD Live, are you still in the house? Where's Anthony? Anthony, are you still here? Anthony, where are you at? Yeah, I'm still here. Ah! Oh my God, uh, I've been missing you. Oh yeah. man, it's good to hear your voice. Let's go. Anthony Live, it's, another RGB poet. Let's go. It's been, it's been forever, but I'm back. All right. Uh, this piece is called Five Days. So I'm gonna give you day one and day two. Day one, waiting to taste your sweet ne nectar arouses the dormant parts of me. Parts that have been awakened by only your sensual touches and calming whispers. I no longer need to dream, for you have made my dreams my reality. With each pass of your hand across my chest, I become enticed to bend at the whim of your words. With each kiss, I await the next. With each piece of clothing that you wear, I want to remove them and watch your naked frame dance in the midnight air. Feeding my body and soul with the sweet nectar that you release. Oh, I can't wait for the next day. Well, I'd ask, can I have an instant replay? We move from- Oh, let's go. Keep going. You got another one. Okay, day two. We move from the shower to the bed, still dripping wet. Me from the shower, you from the intense passion that flows deep within you. <clears throat> The aroma of our love is invigorating. 
teasing my senses with its exotic flavors for which, for which I can't wait to taste. I lay you on the bed, move apart your legs, fall to my knees and begin to eat the most delicious and delicate dessert that has ever came across my palate. With an arch of your back, you thrust your hips, giving me all you have, making sure your love will cast. Drenching me in its juices as my mouth is all filled. With a grip of the sheets, your moans get deep. Again, you climax, legs trembling, teeth clenching, heavy breathing, heart pumping, world spinning. This is not the end, but just the beginning. In peace. Let's go. Let's go, poets. Let's go. Oh my God. So MD, we, we published an incredible book that he wrote with his son and it was like love letters to their wives. And it is such a beautiful book. So if you are looking for a Valentine present or a wedding present or an anniversary present or like a bridal shower present, you got to get their book. It is just beautiful. It is titled, I Do Every Day. And it is just the most beautiful, oh, it's so sweet, right? So, and they're just lovely. Uh, the two of them are just lovely. And to see a father-son do it together is just, it's super cool. Right. Um, and my son just got married last month. So yeah, his, wife, his wife had never seen the book. Oh. So we surprised her at the wedding with the book. Oh my god. You, you all right. Send me if 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 you want, send me some pictures if they're cool with it. And I'll like do a feature spot on the website for oh. it because it's it's so important for people to understand the underlying current behind a book. The people behind the book, like what the purpose of the book was, the meaning of the book, the message of the book. And this is like it is such it really is a beautiful tribute to love. Um so if, if they're if they're cool with it, you send me like the picture and I will I will totally put it on the website and feature them on it. Oh yeah, we, um, we definitely have a picture. So we definitely have a picture of them holding up the book. Oh, oh, MD. I'm so glad you're here. I'm I'm yeah, I'm really glad you're here. You sign up for book club if you want. Get your book on on the list for us to feature. Uh, I think we're into the spring of next year, but get your book. There's a if you need me to resend you the spreadsheet, I will. Um, yes, but yeah, okay. that would be awesome. All right, let's go. All right, so Unmesh, I am um, getting to get you on. We have an awesome list going. We have Teresa, Cindy, Doc, Terry Rose, and Unmesh. Uh, but before that, let's see if Matthew's uh, let's see if Matthew's audio or his connection is better now. Do you want to try Matthew? See. Mike. I heard Mike. Come on, come on, come on, technology. Give it to me. Give it to me. I don't know, Matthew. Try again. Oh, oh no. Is it? Can you hear me? It's like every other word. It's better than last time, but it's still not good. Okay, Damn it. Dang, Julio. You want to try dialing in instead? That, 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 let's try, try coming in through the dial in. So where it says join, you know, you just, just on your phone. Just dial the phone number. Uh, do you do you do you have access to that? Do you know how to get that? Oh, well, use the chat. Use the chat. Let me know. I can put the if you need me to drop the phone number, the dial in in the chat. I will, because uh, I can't hear you. So I don't know why I'm asking you because I can't hear you. Um, but yes, feel free to dial in. Oh man, 
I'm so sad whenever I can't hear a post, but I appreciate you being patient, Matthew. And if we can get you on, I'll get you on. Don't worry. All right. So my mama's coming up. My mama's coming up. Uh, this is Teresa Galleon from Albuquerque right here in New Mexico. My Chesoto sister. I love her. And then after Teresa, we have Cindy, Doc, Terry Rose. And Unmesh. That is the order. And then we'll have Mark States close us out tonight uh, with an encore. Thank you, beautiful. It's been a wonderful week. <laughs> Say a special another shout out to uh, New Mexico Poetry Summit. It's a wonderful thing that Risa did. If you missed it, put it on now, your calendar. Now, Teresa, your audio does sound a little funky. It's, it's is, is Teresa's audio funky for everyone, or is it just me? I don't, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Rich, it's a little funky. I can, Mark. Mama, Teresa, Mama, I, if you can hear me, I can hear you fine. There's just a little bit of fuzz around your voice, as if the gain's up or something. Like a but I can hear you. pedal, a little. I, I don't know what to do, because I'm low tech. Oh, oh you're fine. That's you're fine. better. Maybe you just need to be closer to the mic. That's better. Is it, is it okay? I moved closer to the computer, so that puts me closer to the mic. Is that better? Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I, I'm low tech, <laughs> truly. Anyway, what I was saying was a uh, special shout out again to Marissa. She did such a wonderful job with the um, uh, New Mexico Poetry Summit. If you missed it, put it on your calendars for next year, 2024, second week in September, I believe, something like that. But anyway, happy to be here tonight. The first poem is called Catch the Wave. The open road is the only opium you need to experience freedom trembling in your luscious body. Ride your rubber wheels on asphalt and throw kisses to the clouds. They will speak back to you in rainbows and water blossoms. Look, listen, and savor every love stimulus riding the open road beside you. The sky is calling for you. Embrace the gift with love notes. A low rider in the desert on a highway no to nowhere seeks the still solitude of desert spaces that call the spirit home. No need to worry about the distance nor danger. The desert holds the key to your life. Each key is given with readiness and willingness is achieved. Do not forget to look up. The clouds stream messages in a consensus around your head. Be vigilant always and catch the wave. And the second piece is called Sin of Love. You look at me and penetrate my heart. Now I am a prisoner of your words, teasing me at every level of my being. My thoughts are obsessed with the idea of your love. I undress in my dreams and fall into your embrace. When I wake up, I stroke the image rubbing my heart. I ache for your presence to touch on the earth plane. Then sadness bursts my chest wide open, floods my body with the water of pain. You will not see nor feel this. You are only in my mind. As the warmth of you fades into morning, reality sucks my blood. I cry alone in the physical, totally protected by sacred fragrances. I want to go back to my dreams where my soul may engage the everlasting scent. So I close my eyes, embrace the spiritual light, and awaken to the scent of love. Thank you. Let's go, Teresa Galleon. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yeah, we just love you here. We just, yes, thank you so much for being part of this. Yeah. Um, feel free to share your links in the chat, y'all, so you can follow each other, all of that good stuff. If 
uh, anyone is like, hey, who is that person who was on the open mic? Just reach out to me and I probably have their contact information and I can get that to you. All right, let's keep going. Matthew, let's see. Third time's the charm. Let's see if we could get you on. I hope the third time's the charm because I'm on my phone. Is it working? Is it working? Hello, hello? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. I can hear you. Sorry about that. And by the way, thank you very much for having me here, in spite of the multiple times that it took me to get in here successfully. <laughs> I hope you all are doing good tonight. I'm just going to do two short pieces, if I may. And all right. OK. Absolutely. Uh, about, say it again. Absolutely. Oh, OK. OK. Sorry about that. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a proud father. Um, so far with poetry and arts, I've only contributed no more than nine years of my life. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. And with that being said, I just want to thank you all very much for the epiphanies, the perspectives, and the experiences that you openly share with, well, I'm a stranger to most of you besides Mark. I've actually met Mark at an open mic, but once again, thank you all. Um, the poem I was gonna read is called Connection, actually. Here we go. <clears throat> we are our own system. No longer shall I contribute to corrupt regulations anymore. My children's lives depend on our longevity. There's over a billion of us living on a life source we should not abuse. They want us to be governed and controlled. They want you to hide behind these masks like we have most of our lives. Why are world successors out of the blue leaving from sudden natural causes which never prolonged as an issue before, according to media and news? Now I'm not a sheep to eat or source, but there's evidence supporting that I'm a leader in this revolution, as so are you. They want to mislead you with every presidential election. We cannot lose this fight, the war on the outside, the war within our demons. I mean, I'm sorry, within to our demons. United as one may be the only way to save our home before we roam with the doomed. Remember to look in the mirror, fill your mind with positive informations and stand completely firm for all that you love and believe in. You will not fail by believing in your connections. Faith empowers belief in a multitude of beneficial ways. I'm still learning this. That was my peace connections. I appreciate you all for your time for that. Uh, oh yeah, the next one, another short piece. Um, like I said, uh, if, I, if I didn't explain upon my introduction about me being an advocate, I, I write from experiences uh, as well as heartbreak a multiple like multiple subjects but what i can say the most is my son is by far the most influential person in my life that impacts my writing if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be here amongst intelligent minds like yourself contributing to, to this open mic thank you there's no other like you if a child ever says that you're beautiful embrace it they're the purest form of innocence on earth. Believe in them because nobody had it perfect growing up. Our parents, they're only human. They're not designed without errors. And the last time I checked, it's okay to make mistakes. You're stronger than your situation. Life is what you make out of it. And no hero in life had it easy. Ain't that right, hero? So don't stress yourself over today if tomorrow will provide a continuation or series of opportunities. It may not be perfectly flawless, but there's no other like you. And that's what's truly beautiful about your individual uniqueness. Embrace your authenticity because that is now rare days. Handle the toughest situations with a smile because tears, they do not make you weak. It's cleansing, refreshing. And remember from this very thing that once sat in you, you will acquire newfound strength to aid another going through the same battle. Your strength, much like your presence, it impacts many lives and it builds bonds. Believe in yourself. 
love yourself as you should. There's no other like you. Thank y'all for your time. Let's go. That was, I'm so glad. Thank you for being so patient. And I'm so glad technology figured itself out so that we could hear you and you could be a blessing for the rest of us tonight. Uh, so thank you so much, Matthew, for being here. I'm pretty sure I've heard you before, um, at least once or twice. And um, that line you had, before we roam with the doomed, um, I wrote that down. Uh, I'm going to write something to that. I, I really enjoy um, your work. And yes, um, congratulations on fatherhood. Love that baby. Uh, because they grow up, everyone always says that they grow up so fast, right? Very it, it happens. Um, it, it happens and it happens in a blink, in an instant. So, um, but thank you for being so wonderful uh, and allowing your child to be your inspiration. That's more than a lot of children get. So thank you for that. Uh, keep coming back. I'm excited to hear more from you. I'll be back in the future. Once again, I appreciate you all for listening. And I appreciate the time that you contribute to bring us all together through empathy and make us help each other for the better. I appreciate you. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm excited because our circle keeps growing in the most amazing way. <laughs> All right, we got Cindy Shaw Chatham up next, Doc Janning, Terry Rose Jerson, Un Mesh, and we're gonna have Mark finish us out. Uh, so don't go anywhere because the rest of the open mic is like fire. Uh, if you have not, uh, if you have not heard these poets, uh, these last uh, four who are gonna finish us off. All right, Cindy, are you ready? I think so. Hi. Um, thank you, Mark, for your beautiful reading and also for bringing me into this group for the very first time. Um, please excuse my uh, allergy voice. I'm going to do my best. The first poem is called The Date. It's a short poem. Charlie, I really wowed him. I was like Mona Rogers in her one woman show. The world was my player piano and I had the stage. I never thought of you much. I drank pink slow gin fizzes to forget and drooled over young men, licking my lips as they smiled at me. He played pool and drank red Cape Cods in a tall glass. He laughed at the amazing words I picked out of a pink grass high to dazzle us both. When I told him he looked like Popeye, he groaned. Well, he had that silly hat on. Fibbing, I told him there was nothing wrong with that and went back to the poem I was writing about you. He returned to his game of pool and dreamed about fucking me when the last ball hit the pocket. Okay, that's the first one. Second one is called Trick or Treat. All Hallows Eve, Solemn, Day of the Dead, Halloween, where shadows lurk and spirits rise like smoke, I'm told to wrap my native drum with a black cloth to keep evil spirits from moving in. Evil thrives on earth and is at war with good in the heavens. I recall burning of witches. Was I one of the unlucky? I tried to believe in angels as tall as a three-story house, calling them to encircle my home when needing protection. I can't explain explain the strange experiences I had in Savannah, Georgia. First were of the haunted type with much later likely angelic. I've never seen an angel, but I have loved ones who did. I've only heard unholy voices calling out my name. They've tricked me into answering from the antique spiral staircase to leap from my bed to flee the woods, to jerk from a light sleep. Dark spirits follow me from cemeteries. What do they want? All Hallows Eve, guise, guise yourself, bring out the mass, beware the midnight time known as the witching hour. 
wear an evil face, be your dark demonic secret self, but don't forget to pack it later into a locked drawer. Wear any mask of innocence, wear angel wings, be a good fairy, or imagine an impish self who lies within waiting to play. Be your favorite totem animal, leap and chase and howl. Become the minstrel, gnome or trickster, the queen of hearts. Dress with feathers and fans and boas and jewels, a lacy mask, wear tall shiny boots, black crepe hats, the velvet cloak from another life. What can we become? Are we dark or light? Are we both? Are we a charlatan, a, mask a masquerader, someone in disguise? Who is your shadow self? Who is your harlequin half? Which is demons, alien spirits, revelry and Dionysus, trickery and treachery? The evil that men do has surpassed itself. Trick or treat. Thank you. Woo! Let's go, Cindy. Let's go. Welcome to The Word is Ripe. So glad y'all are here. Thank so many you. new faces. Um, and many, uh, many mainstays as well here. So thank you for being here. And yes, the billiard, uh, the billiard poem, please do that again uh, sometime. I love oh, the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I will. I'd love to. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got Doc Jenny in the house. Um, we have Terry Rose Jertson and then Unmesh. Three more, and then Mark will do an encore poem to close us out, unless Russell wants to read uh, those who, who who are joining late, or Reggie, um, if, if either of you would like to read, uh, we can, uh, we'll make room for Mark's friends uh, and his people tonight on the open mic. I got you. So just let me know uh, sooner rather than later, please. All right, Doc, are you ready? You look so colorful, sir. I am all ready. The beautiful stuff behind you. Good yeah. to see you. Good to be seen rather than viewed. <laughs> Traces hidden in folds of a tapestry, a tattered tapestry, a threadbare tapestry, the tapestry of time, a tapestry woven of hopes, embroidered with dreams. Memories live there in abditory memory. Memories of what was, memories of what could have been, memories of love. Secreted there too are yearnings, yearnings of Sadade and Hiraif, all sing a whispered song of loss, sorrow, and all oh, heck. Sorry. Okay, they sing of lost sorrow and longing. They sing of a want, a want for what was to be once more. And threading through all her traces, traces of us. Odyssey, mystic odyssey of morning glides across endless skies on glowing sails of light. It follows age old pathways of time and those of infinite beauty in the land between dawn and noon. It is a journey of moments from the morning star to the solar zenith amid ageless songs of the sun. And the moments are dreams of eons and landscapes of forever in the confluence of the ninth wave, an unceasing eternal odyssey, dissolving the walls of night, giving birth to day. And I'll finish with synesthesia. Chimes of love ring in silent joy amid memories of midnight. They echo in breathless Mazarin hues against the tapestry of stars and bell their ecstasy into eternity. 
an ecstasy proclaimed in colors of imagination, on veils of mystery and delight, an evocation of endless synesthesia in transcendent emotion and dreams. Thank you. Oh, let's go talk Jenny in the house. Oh, I've been missing your work, sir. Oh, it's almost like he's a poet laureate. <laughs> he is. All right, let's go. He knows he misses. If I don't say it, he's going to be like, wait, what? where's my tagline? Oh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, on Tuesday, I'm going to be reading uh, for the final centennial celebration of Notre Dame College of Ohio. Uh, it, it's going to be a 100 line poem. Let's go! And they, they have it already and the people there love it and they're printing it in multiple copies for everyone in the audience to be able to have a copy. I would totally write a poem about football, but I want to make football and make a soccer just to fuck with them. Like well, this isn't this isn't this is Notre, Notre, Notre Dame Uni University. University in Indiana. This is Notre Dame College of Ohio. It's a small it's a okay. small college. It's still a college. Let's go. All right, then you should do fighting. I you should do a whole poem as if you were a fighting Irish and be like, wait, these are, these are the wait, fighting wait, falcons. Where am I again? <laughs> these are the fighting falcons. I made mean, you like the old professor. Oh, no, no. I, maybe they're always falking know, around. Serious. <laughs> they're always falking around. Oh my God, do that. Uh, yes. I mean, what's it hurt? But at the end of your thing, uh, you know, it's hilarious. Oh my gosh, they're going to love it. You're going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Um, yeah, let's, before it gets cold too, hopefully. Uh, it gets really cold up there. All right, we got... Two more, and then Mark's going to close this out with an encore. Terry Rose Jertson, unless, now this is unless Russell or Reggie want to read a piece. Uh, the, the chat keeps like scooching way fast, and then it backtracks. So I do not have a request from Russell or uh, Reggie, so I'm going to assume that they don't want to read it. But if that changes, uh, please let me know, and I will. Uh, Re Reggie, if you want to read or, or Russell, let me know. Uh, Nancy Helgeson, welcome, welcome. Yes, we'll see you at book club tomorrow. No problem. All right, Terry Rose Jurt said her book, Chameleon Chronicles, uh, Words Never Spoken. It is an incredible book. This woman is just so fantabulous. And uh, she has artwork and photographs and found poems and black poems and white poems and all these amazing things also in her book. So it's not just uh, not just words on a page, uh, but she's wonderful. The book has a five dollar coupon uh, in the month in in the entire month of September. If you want to buy her book for five dollars off, you got to get it through the website. So go to redorgreenbooks.com. Red R E A D. You can find the coupon code. You can get her book, uh, and she will ship it to you. Uh, she'll sign and send you the copy in the month of September. All right, Miss Thing, and then Unmesh, you are after. there we go. So um, I was at a um, in li a live um, soup can magazine. I don't know if you um, are familiar with them, but I was at a live reading today. So I got to read in person. So I'm not going to read uh, what I read then. I'm looking at this one. It's kind of a longer piece called My Biggest Heartbreak. He said he was interested in the Holocaust, which was my first red flag. In my mind, there was no relation of that horrific event to him. He accusingly inquired, don't you know what my nationality is? Again, still not following. He was a bunch of things, but not Jewish. He said to me, you know, I only go out with Jewish girls. I thought you were Jewish when I first met you, but now, pointing to my pregnant stomach with his baby, as if to say he would be gone if it wasn't for that mistake, I shot him a look that said, how dare you refer to your child in that hateful, unspoken tone. Later, he would repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly show me in the Old Testament 
in the book of Joel where it says that the covers are too short for the beds. Much noise, background noise. He would painfully highlight different places with pen where he was convinced that God had foretold this only to him and the Jewish people, the only chosen ones. He said this to me in a demeaning way, as if association would save him. God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy was his answer. The best thing that ever happened to him, he would never realize. For him, it was just another day when we were walking on the Atlantic City boardwalk. He shouted to the sky, God, if you're real, show me a sign. Then out of the blue, as if to answer him, hitting him in the head, came a small change purse with some coins in it. Perhaps symbolizing the 30 pieces of silver paid to the betrayer of Jesus, or perhaps it was a wise old woman in the crowd of people who wanted this lunatic to shut up. Begging the question, was this his sign or was this God's way of asking him to put his money where his mouth was? That's my piece and it's my book, which um, we're going to talk about tomorrow at one o'clock and I put the link in the chat. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Terry Rose Jertson. Uh, like I said, you can get her book. This is an incredible book for only $10 with a $5 coupon. On, uh, available on the website. Anytime you can get a whole book of poetry that includes artwork and other things for $10 or less, like just go get it. Uh, and all the proceeds of the book sales in the month of book club go directly to the author. So please, please, you know, do that as well. All right. Um, now I do have uh, Reggie on the open mic list. If anyone else, so Lee, I see, welcome Lee Harwood to the room. Uh, We're rounding out our show because we've been here now two hours, but I will add you at the end if you would like to read. I'm guessing that is why your hand is raised. Um, so if you give us just a sec, we're going to um, continue with this open mic and I will add you. So we've got Unmesh, Reggie, Lee, and then we'll have Mark States close us out. Unmesh, what is good? What's up from India? How are you? Hey, Marisa, I am good. How are you? Every I've been wanting to come to your open mic. Now that you move it to Friday mornings, it's a little more manageable for me uh, uh, because I'm already up early taking kids to school. So we'll see if I can't just pop on your open mic. So Friday mornings, y'all are not doing anything. Go to Unmesh's open mic uh, because that's Friday night in India. And then you get to, you know, sometimes he pops in here. Uh, it's morning for him, but it's night for us. So, you know, it's it's a nice it's a nice balance, right, for, for all of us. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to see you. I hope your family is well. And then Honestly. after, Mesh will be Reggie. Thanks, thanks, Marissa. Great to be here, as always. Uh, thanks for your support, motivation, and inspiration, Marisa, to all of us. And here we go. Trying to find love in others. He started hating himself. Every time he fell in love, something important he lost, which never came back. Like love cannot be measured. Loss is immeasurable. They say hurt makes you strong. Ask the tree which is cut into two pieces. Ask the servant slaving in master's field day and night hurt just hurts like a cobra sting each and every time there are places inside you where you don't allow unauthorized entry when someone enters into those sacred spaces leaving is impossible physically might be away from you but still, that person sits inside you, in that protected space, you are never stronger, never fearless, never brave. You just understand how to hide your insecurity, when, where, how, like a mercenary searching for happiness 
asking everyone when, where, how. Identifying villains is difficult. Identifying the villain hiding in you is almost impossible. It's almost impossible. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Oh, that's a whole book title, Identifying the Villain. Oh, mesh. Let's go. Uh, ooh, that was that was it. <clears throat> Mac, yes. Uh, Unmesh does have a, an incredible book available, Light Shadow Life. It is available on Amazon. I believe it's only five dollars, y'all. Like straight up, go buy his damn book. It's amazing. He's amazing, and I can't wait for your next book to come out. Uh, if you need help with that, let me know. I'm here. Uh, I also will be putting out a call for debut authors. If anyone has never published a book of poetry and you're interested in publishing next year, hit me up, redgreenbooks.com, red, R-E-A-D, poetic license. Uh, but yes, you uh, that, yep, yeah, we're going to compile that list and it's already a strong list for next year. So I'm very, very excited for that. All right, let's go. Reggie, welcome to the, the word is right. Welcome to Red or Green Books. Uh, and then after Reggie, we have Lee and then Mark will close us out tonight. Cloth diapers. September the 11th, 2023. 22 years ago today, the world was propelled unwillingly into the arms of blowback. A Saudi Sheikh, Osama bin Laden, trained by the CIA and the Mujahideen, convinced 19 men, 15 from his nation, to willingly plunge top fuel planes into the Twin Towers of the Pentagon. Some let's roll Flight 93 passengers thwarted a fourth meant for the U.S. Capitol. 60 years ago this week, I was one year, one month, and one day old on my mother's 38th birthday, I was potty trained. I was reminded of this, not that I would remember it after I bragged to my big sister that my granddaughter was too in potty train. We had cloth diapers back then. No one was playing with you, Reggie, meaning changing cloth diapers, flushing the load and washing them probably wasn't pleasant. And the observation that disposable diapers might have delayed development. On our mother's birthday, I was one year, one month and one day old on that day, Four girls were killed by white supremacists in the notorious 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama, 60 years ago. Growing old in my community is a privilege not afforded to many. To this day in 2023, we rightly describe Al Qaeda as a terrorist organization, yet the Department of Justice has no such designation for Nathan Bedford Forrest KKK, whose whole existence centered on terrorizing the newly freed and formerly enslaved into not voting in the best interests of their community. Two medical professionals, Dr. Elizabeth H. Blackburn and Dr. Carol W. Greider, shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine with Dr. Jack W. Zostak in 2009 for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. Let me translate. The long thread-like DNA molecules that carry our genes are packed into chromosomes, the telomeres being the caps on their ends. Elizabeth Blackburn and Jack Zostak discovered that a unique DNA sequence in the telomeres protects the chromosomes from degradation. Carol Greider and Elizabeth Blackburn identified telomerase, the enzyme that makes telomere DNA. These discoveries explain how the ends of the chromosomes are protected by the telomeres and that they are built by telomerase. If the telomerase are shortened, cells age. Conversely, if telomerase activity is high, Telomere length is maintained and cellular senescence is delayed. The National Institutes of Health found telomere, telomeres profoundly shortened in African Americans corresponding to shorter lifespans of existence. September the 11th, 20, 2001 was on a Tuesday. September the 15th, 1963, my mother's birthday was on a Sunday. Four little girls who should be grandmothers were practicing for a performance that day when domestic terrorists bombed their church. Their reaction to the March on Washington on the anniversary of Emmett Till's lynching. And my mother and father the day after had to go to work on Monday. For them, Father Knows Best, Hazi and Harriet, and Ward and June Cleaver and Lever to Beaver did not exist as options. After the news, they had to drop me off at the sitter and hope that they see me again. Attending church services, I was told, was understandably limited. Living in fear of being killed for being Black shortens your telomeres. There is cause and effect, not curses of ham or divine magic. Growing old in my community is a privilege. 
We are 400 years tired of this terrorism for the sin of being brought here in chains for forced servitude. It isn't woke, it's history. It isn't book banning, it's psychopathy. You cannot ban the book that is seared in my soul. What's insanity is that the Department of Justice still refuses to designate Christian nationalists, the KKK, white nationalists and white supremacist groups as domestic terrorist organizations like Al Qaeda. As Americans finally experienced on September the 11th, 2001, the psychological effects of the horrific fear of not knowing what calamity will end your existence, living in fear of being killed for the sin of being alive, shortens your telomeres. As my big sister observed, this country needs more cloth diapers for our development. Oh, what the, oh my God. Y'all, were you listening? Did you hear that? Oh my God. Y'all go back and watch it again. Yes. Yes, yepity. Yes, yes, yes. All of it. Yes, fucking me. Yes, thank you, Reggie Goodwin. Now you're screwed. You're going to have to come back to where it is right and keep reading on these Saturday night open mics. Yes. Yes. All of it. All of it and more. Yes. Uh, for those who weren't fucking listening, go back and watch it. Done. <sighs> Let's go. Damn it. Put your information in the chat. I'm going to come find you and follow you. <laughs> I want to hear more. Damn it. I want to hear more. Let's go. You, I got to introduce you. I got, I got some people you need to meet. All right, let's keep going. Lee, welcome Lee to The Word is Right. Welcome, uh, glad to have you. And then we're going to have Mark States close us out with an encore poem. I am actually here for Mark. Um, I met him in the 90s in um, Bay Area poetry scene. He was hosting the Afrometropolitan open mic series. He was a, one of the many co-hosts. He taught me so much about how to host an open mic. And that is what we call a transferable skill. And of course, I loved his poetry too. He's a super great guy. And some of you have heard this poem elsewhere. But, you know, do people ask rock stars to not play that song? They're sick of it. No. They say, oh, could you play that? And they're like, oh, my God, not Hotel California again. So this poem is not a Tonka, but it's Tonka adjacent. And <laughs> it's a Gogyoshi. And it's called the Geode. The Geode didn't ask to be broken but it was. Shattered now, it's secret crystal caverns glitter for all to see. Life will break you. Be the geode. Take a bow, Geode. Thank you. And welcome, Mark. Oh, let's go. Thank you so much, Lee. Glad to have you. And I'm so grateful that you're here supporting Mark because he's wonderful. And if 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 we can't, you know, turn on the computer and support our friends from afar. Like, you know, what the fuck are we doing, right? Uh, let's go. Um, I'm so grateful for everyone who came through. Uh, just another quick reminder that Mark does have a PayPal. And so I will drop it in the chat again. Dreamboogie at yahoo.com is his PayPal. If you do not have PayPal, you have Cash App. Instead, you can send me something through Cash App. Please put a note in the... Um, transfer that I know it's for Mark. And then I will send that to him uh, via PayPal so that uh, we can help him get tipped today. Uh, for those who are joining a little bit late, even a couple dollars is uh, a lot. There's now 24 people in the room. 
uh, that's a, a, a very nice uh, tip for him. Uh, so whatever your heart is uh, calling you to do tonight, please just don't do nothing. And let's um, let's get this man a cup of coffee, a gallon of gas, uh, a tank of gas, <laughs> whatever, whatever we feel like, uh, because this feature has been really, really incredible tonight. Don't forget tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern is Book Club on uh, Red or Green Books. Uh, Facebook page will be live with Terry Rose Jerkson and her incredible book, uh, Chameleon Chronicles, Words Never Spoken. All right, uh, Mark, are you ready? Would you like to close us down? Let me go ahead and spotlight you, sir, and uh, and give us an encore poem, and then I'll give everyone a toast, and uh, we'll be gone for the night. Wonderful. And uh, again, thank you, everyone. I am uh, overwhelmed and blown away by how many people came to this tonight. Um, so thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the kind words and your contributions on the open mic. And so I guess for the encore, you're going to get a sneak peek at uh, Inside Outrageous Side 2, which has not been scheduled anywhere yet. Um, <clears throat> Aromatherapy for Neurotic Insects. I wonder why the local store puts cans of Raid next to the cans of air freshener. Kill the bugs and still have a country garden in your home? You want to be inclusive and open-minded, but it has to be a certain class of nature. The high society types with sweet aromas of expensive perfume, not the riffraff barging in to steal your food and make a mess of the place. So is this like pick your poison? Well, your honor, it was a home invasion. This bug coming to rob me blind. It flew in my face all agitated and buzzing away. I pleaded, no, get off me, but it kept attacking. It happened so quickly. I didn't mean to do it. Just grab the nearest thing to protect myself. And, and I sprayed it with country gardens. You plant a country garden to invite insects to your yard and spray paint the air inside your house, tagging it with the aroma of a country garden. Man. The bugs must be confused. You invite them to your yard, but won't let them in the house. So which do you spray first? The raid to kill the bugs? Then the air freshener to cover up the stench of death, the bitter whiff of poison? Or the air freshener? Lure insects in like the Ted Bundy mass murderer you are. Entice them to your lair and spring the trap push the nozzle and pull the trigger, so to speak. East Oakland, where I grew up, a neighbor kid took his BB gun and shot the cockroaches from the walls of his dad's garage. But today we're civilized with our death penalties. We use gas chambers and a cocktail of chemicals. No blood, no guilty conscience, no constant wringing of hands in the bathroom sink. We put up walls and a roof to keep the outside outside. We bring in house plants and aromatherapy and the smell of grandma's greens boiling on the stove. And then we kill the environment by killing the environment that dares to crawl in. Hey, I got new neighbors at the apartment complex, a beehive. It's a 24-hour operation, a buzz of activity, constant traffic, creatures with eyes uh, bugged out, terrorizing the rest of the neighborhood. It's like living next door to a crack den. And one of them buggers broke in, snuck in through the apartment window. I confronted her, shooed her, pointed to the open window, but she kept banging her head against the glass till she wigged out and flew into my face with a vengeance. Went totally 5150 on me. I evicted her for non-payment of rent, but the sheriffs wouldn't take her out with force. So yeah, I rolled up a newspaper and smacked that as my dad did it to me and it sure kept me on the straight and narrow and standing at attention. So if she couldn't take it like a man, just fall to the floor, curl up and die. That's not my fault. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I was ticked off. 
I couldn't burn incense or let my lady in wearing her lavender perfume after that. And I need that aromatherapy to unstress and keep me from bugging out. So people, use peppermint oil or cayenne instead to keep those neurotic insects away. Oh, uh, y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for our featured reader tonight, the one and only Mark Stay. Mark. Thank you. That last one was great. Really great. Thank you so much. It reminds me of how I systematically kill black widows in my backyard. Uh, oh. That's the only thing I can just like widows. Anything venomous, poisonous, that might kill my children. Other than that, I am totally fine if they live in my backyard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, so th thank you all so very much for being here tonight. Uh, the first Saturday of every month is Poetry in a Movie. We do an open mic and live stream a movie here on Zoom. Uh, the last Saturday of every month is uh, Karaoke Night with Terry Rose Durson. And then we have a lot of fun things happening in between. Uh, we have shows just about every single day of the week here at The Word is Right, whether they're open mics, with their workshops, their writing um, get-togethers, book clubs. Some, th th there's something every, every day just about here. Uh, so please like, share, subscribe, follow uh, to The Word is Right. Go to redergreenbooks.com, red, R-E-A-D, if you would like to see the posts who we've uh, published so far. Uh, we've done over 50 books of poetry, over two, over 200 people, and over 600,000 words in the three and a half years that we've been going. Uh, it is an incredible feat. Um, if you are interested in helping us with uh, American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence, we do have a sponsor, a senator program to send that book anonymously to every U.S. state senator. That's one of our goals. And uh, you can purchase the book for only $15 and we will send that to a U.S. state senator of your choice. So you can pick it on the website if it's available. And uh, those are some of the big things that we have uh, that, we're, that we're pushing through. I will be doing a call for poems for volume two uh, to be released next year. And uh, so keep your eyes and ears to the ground for that. Otherwise, thank you all so very much. Uh, I look forward to the next time I get to uh, share this space. Thank you so much, Mark Stace. Please uh, uh, donate something to uh, his sister today. Uh, give him something, just don't do nothing. If you're not sure how to do that, reach out to us at The Word is Right. You can find his bio as well as all of his handles uh, on our Facebook page for The Word is Right. All right, let's do a toast as we end this evening. I toast on my show a closing blessing for everyone. So grab a glass, whatever happens to be near you. Here, And this is an old Gaelic, uh, an old Gaelic toast. Here's to health in your company and Damn. I lost you. Crap. Oh. Such is the internet. Yep. Well, here, here's a game. Here we go. Here, here we go. All right. Start over. <laughs> Open your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and glasses. Let's drink and meet merry bad thoughts to refrain, for we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the Word is Right's Saturday night open mic featuring Mark States. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. Thank y'all so much for being here. Peace and blessings. Much love, everyone. Thanks, See you Marissa. Next time. Thank you, Marissa. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. This is the first time we've actually seen each other, at Bye, least Mark. virtually in the flesh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I I think I have uh, seen or 